I Wear the Cat Empire, and this is Live in Limbo. No way, no way. The bones inside my head. here with the Cat Empire. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Good to be here. Hey. So you guys arrived uh, here in Canada about a week ago. Uh, how's the jet lag doing? Are you over it completely, or are you still a bit weird with the, the time schedules now? Well, we had a 30-hour trip over here, and then we kept on changing time, time zones from one coast to the oh, other. Goodness. So I'm not sure. I mean, some of us are waking <laughs> up at 4, and some yeah. of us are going to bed at 4. So maybe <laughs> And I not. heard that there was a casualty with the suitcases. Has that all been resolved by now? It has. That's yes, good. Good yeah. to hear. Yeah. Well, welcome yeah. to Toronto. We're glad to have you here and excited to hear you play tonight. Oh, it's good to so, be here. Yeah. I, love, I love this theatre and, and it's a nice city to, oh, to be well, in. Well, I'm glad that you like it. I like it as well. <laughs> so I know you guys have been to Toronto a couple of times and you've toured Canada a couple of times as well. You even mm -hmm. have a nice infographic you made about it. Uh, and I, I love that infographic, I must say. I'm a, a bit of a data nerd, so that made me very happy that you expressed how much you love Canada and did it with a, a data sense. Um, so. You have been to Canada a few times, but is there anything that strikes you as weird or especially different when you compare it to back home? Oh, what do you reckon? Bears? <laughs> I don't know. Do you not have bears in Australia? No, we don't know. Oh, yeah, we got drop bears, but they're really small. They're just like this big, but they probably kill more people than your bears. Well, you, I think you have more dangerous animals in general over yeah. in Australia. Drop bears are like, um, they wait in the trees and when people walk underneath, they drop on back of your shoulders. So I, I can't tell whether you're, you're yeah. making no, no, a an actual ask, thing. <laughs> ask any Australian, they'll okay. tell you about drop bears. Okay, I mean. I'm going to do some research yeah, afterward yeah. just to confirm, yeah. is the cat empire lying to me yeah. or not? <laughs> no, we wouldn't, do, we wouldn't, we wouldn't lie. <laughs> well, it's a, if it is a lie, it's a very convincing one. Oh, good, so. thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing that. Yeah, um, it's big too, like it's, because uh, we, we kind of see our country as being really big, like, well, it's like, oh, Australia's huge, but then Canada's huge it's massive like yeah flying from coast to coast is a is really mm -hmm. a epic flight and you've been doing a lot of flying these days we were was in, in winnipeg and calgary a bit earlier calgary yeah. uh, well our first show was in quebec yes. and our second show was in on vancouver island yeah. so that's so like, all the way on the other side yeah. of the country yeah, yeah. <laughs> from coast to coast yeah. so that infographic i was talking about you had a, a couple of interesting stories on there about some lo lost passports or some band members that were left behind at the border and there there must be a you seem a bit uh, confused I'm not there sure what no the infographic is. i'm sorry I'm, oh I'm... check your facebook page it was great okay great yeah i didn't, I didn't post <laughs> no that no worries yeah. but there are some interesting stories about uh passports being lost or lost band members is there a an interesting story behind that there uh that was me i mean only as interesting as the bureaucracy of passports <laughs> which is not very um no it was it was it's a boring story i mean i can tell you but basically i got stuck in london waiting for a stamp in my passport mm -hmm. and it didn't come in time and so the band had to leave without me and go and do shows in Holland, I think, mm -hmm. and, and I was left behind. Oh, um, well, I'm glad know. that you're here with us today. Yeah, and no passport issues. Maybe lost luggage but no lost passport. So I'm, that's I'm good. the only person in the band who's, who's missed a gig. Um, it makes ever. you special. There you go. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. So, it was very strange. <laughs> yeah. So you guys are touring your seventh album, Rising with the Sun, right now. Uh, so what's the creative process like? After writing seven albums, how do you still manage to find that creative spark? Well, for this one, we didn't do any rehearsals, which mm -hmm. was a pretty good way to go about it, I think, because, I mean, I went away and wrote, wrote a bunch of songs, and, and then when I brought them in, the band was kind of performing them as they were hearing them for the first time, mm -hmm. and, and that it's kind of a disarming way to, you know, for a band to, to write music. And, um, I mean, Harry writes songs quite differently to me, and... and you know, would often write a song in the studio as as we were, you know, coming up with an idea and things like that. So, I think keeping it spontaneous like that, and and also the fact that we didn't need to make this album. We've made a lot now, and we made it because we wanted to, mm -hmm. and because we were in a pretty good space at the moment creatively. I think, and um, and so I really feel like the last two albums, Steal the Light and mm -hmm. Rising with the Sun, that were done in the same studio, have you know been a kind of a return to form and mm -hmm. have got a really uplifting feeling to them. Well, that's great that even after seven albums, you still got it, and hopefully for many more albums to come. So hopefully, for yeah. album number eight, do you think you'll take a, a similar process with the limited re rehearsals, or will you try something different again just to keep things fresh? I'm not sure. I haven't really thought all that much about mm -hmm. album number eight, but, you know, we'll have to wait and see <laughs> what, what that might be. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I'm not sure. So I, I read some in some of your your past interviews. You mentioned that sometimes melodies come to your come to you in your sleep, and well, I just think that's such a fascinating concept. <laughs> How does that we were work? Talking about this backstage. Well, <laughs> um, I think there was, was in reference to a song called Bulls, which mm -hmm. is um, one of the singles from this album, and, and that was one of the rare times when um, I dreamed a melody and and it was I could still remember it in the morning. Mm -hmm. Whereas usually what happens, and there's a few examples of this is that I have this great idea for a melody as I'm dreaming and then I wake up in my half sleep and try and sing it into a dictaphone <laughs> and then I bring it into the rehearsals the next day because all that's on this, this dictaphone mm -hmm. is just complete nonsense, oh, like goodness. almost inaudible nonsense and it sends the drummer into fits of laughter. So, it's, <laughs> you know, it's most of yeah. the time you can't remember melodies in your sleep and with you bulls it was kind of good because I could. You should hook yourself up to uh, one of those electrodes that will monitor your brain waves. Maybe they can convert that into the melodies and that way you don't need to have the dictaphone anymore. Maybe not. Yeah. Oh, there's also something kind of beautiful to me about the fact that when you dream something it can be so perfect mm -hmm. and then when, it, when you try to translate it into life it's just, you know, it's lost. <laughs> and, and I think that it's kind of nice mm -hmm. to have lost things in your mm -hmm. life as well. We um, seem to be capturing a lot these days. That's a beautiful statement right there. Make that one the, the next song oh, yeah. song uh, okay. aspect. <laughs> so you guys are known for drawing from a whole bunch of different genres, from ska to funk to hip hop to aspects of world music. <laughs> it's my go. <laughs> oh, there you we don't go. even know what the I, question I, is you yet. you got the, the, the routine <laughs> down. I don't know where it's going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to try to th throw a curveball in now. <laughs> um, so are there any genres that you haven't quite tapped into yet that you think, hey, maybe this would be a, a nice thing to further put into our melting pot of genres? Uh, I think in a, in a sense we're actually moving away from – I mean, I think the band is, is still got all the same ingredients it's always had, but, you know, in, in the early days that, that really was our gimmick, like, you know, one song you're in Eastern Europe and then the next song you're in Africa or whatever – um, and I feel like over time we've we've wanted to move away from that concept um, and and find something else which I still think is like uh, I guess you could call it like a like a, a colorful and, and a varied and exotic sound and a sound that kind of you know, hopefully sounds like everywhere and mm -hmm. but nowhere in specific specifically you know what I mean mm -hmm. like like, we don't want to just kind of rip off other people's genres all the time. We want to, we want to try and make our own sound. And mm. and the last two records for me have been a process of, I guess, focusing first on just the really basic aspects of songwriting. You know, melody, rhythm, harmony, and um, and just putting a few little colours and explosions and and um, uh, interesting things around, which mm -hmm. you know. We don't even have any guitars in our band, you know. We got like trumpets and a DJ and percussion, and so we are able. We have a much wider palette to work with. But I wouldn't say that we're particularly interested in digging through other people's genres anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you've been around for a while, and you have a very distinct sound of your own. So yeah, that's what we're trying you're for. You're sticking with it, and you're true to yourself and true to your own form. Uh, good. I'm glad you think so. <laughs> So in your latest album, you have a song called Bataclan on there. And oh, you've got the routine down. <laughs> and uh, it's a, an, an ode, an homage to the, the victims of the Paris attack that happened er earlier this year. Um, I can imagine that must have been a very emotional song to have been writing. Can you tell me more about the experience you had when you were creating this piece of music? Yeah, it was a very emotional song to write. I was, um, I was immediately you know, very moved by mm -hmm. that news when it came through. And specifically because um, we've spent a good part of our lives in an, in a space like that. I mean, yes. we're here at the moment in, in a theatre. We're live musicians and, and I could imagine the scene and also because we played the Bataclan itself mm -hmm. um, a few times. And, and you know, Paris is a, is a city I love playing and um, have had great experiences there. So I wanted to um, respond to that emotional reaction I had to it and, and more than... It being just a lament, which it is, it's um, also a celebration of live music and, and what we do. And, mm -hmm. and um, I, yeah, I hope it's received that way. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people were very affected by that. But I think it's great that you can take that moment and make it into a, a rallying call like that. Is it a hard? Think, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go. Uh, go. Is it a hard piece to perform though, because of the emotional aspect of it? 
Sometimes it is. It's been. It, it is. It, it's. It's. It's hard to place that song in the set in a way because I mean I had people respond, French people in the crowd, um, come and say that they, um, you know, they felt so sad after they heard it, and then other people saying that they were really uplifted by it. So it's it's a very emotional song, and so it's it's got to be the right moment to put yes. into the set. But I mean I've tried not to. I've really tried not to make it too much of a um, a moment to say you know to give it too much mm -hmm. reverence in that way because really the um, the motion of playing music for us speaks what that song's trying to say anyway mm -hmm. so i think yeah. it's, i think it's a song that should just try and fit in with the rest and, and be part of the show yeah. as opposed to you know mm -hmm. a point where everything stops so you have a date in paris later in november so that's right that, yeah. that, are you a bit worried about playing it there or excited to play it there what's what are the the feelings going through with the, the thought of performing it in that space well i think it's important um to perform that song in paris um because it's a song written about that yes. event and and um you know, if we were prepared to put it on an album, then we should be prepared to yeah. play it there. And, and so we will and, and, and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. well, I'm looking forward to hearing Bataclan and all the other beautiful songs that you guys pieced together tonight. It's going to be a great performance. And I'm glad I get to not only chat with you guys, but witness the performance at Danforth Music Hall later tonight. Oh, it's our pleasure. Um, Thanks. So thanks so much for taking the time, guys. This is Katrina from Live in Limbo signing out with the wonderful Cat Empire. Thanks, guys. Thanks.